Yo, what's up? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge. I am here on vacation. I am in Hawaii. I'm kicking it. I'm chilling. Uh, you know, some relaxation after a very long week. Uh, I should say long week. What am I talking about? Several long months of, uh, of work and everything. So when I get back, uh, the goal is to, to really get back on the ball with the Impact Lounge content. Uh, should be pretty refreshed once I'm out of here. But uh, I have a I have a minute here to talk to you guys, and I saw that the impact viewership has come out, and they're at a low, 69,000, um, which is like an all-time low for Anthem. I think it's an all-time low period. I'm gonna assume that it is an all-time low, like period, period, period. I don't even think, um, and, and it really for damn near any wrestling company, I don't even think Lucha Underground got to that extent. Now, what what do I think this means? I don't think that it means there's less people that give a shit about the product. I don't think they're losing fans. I don't think anything like that. I know people look at first run numbers and that's the the, the assumption right away, right? Uh, I think most people are uh, just inclined to DVR the program now. And I do think there is a there is a larger audience than at the beginning of the year. I know that sounds ridiculous, right? I think that the, um, the show's just not must see. That's what it boils down to. So I do think that the the Kenny Omega stuff. I think that has brought in some extra viewers, but I think it's it's more so more DVRs. I think it's more YouTube hits, looking at the highlights. You know what I mean? I think it's more uh, people reading about the results online. So it's a it's a bigger, broader spectrum, you know, than just just the overnight viewership. But what is true about this is that the show isn't must see. The roster has got super stale for a while, and you know, a lot of guys have left and girls have left in the past like year, year and a half, and they haven't really replaced them necessarily. They brought a few people in, but for the most part, they haven't replaced anybody. My assumption is that, and this is strictly an assumption, my assumption is that they wait for this slam anniversary time every year to refresh the roster. So they're like, okay, we're going to attempt to tread water from January to slam anniversary. That's what I think. And I don't think it's worked. Uh, we see the same matches over and over. Um, and then the matches that are fresh are more like pay-per-view quality matches or pay-per-view pay quality matchups. And sometimes for television, you got to find something in the middle of that, you know? It's hard to imagine. Like, I think, I, re I really think people, the fans are kind of like, sorry if you're getting a lot of wind here, I'm sorry. If, uh... I, th I think the fans are like, well, what, what can they possibly give us for Slammiversary that's going to be exciting, you know? We didn't get the AEW crossover that people were really hoping for. It was never going to be an invasion angle, but people were looking for a little bit more, you know? Who, who throws out the term dream matches more than Impact Wrestling? Nobody, you know? You actually had an opportunity, or actually we thought the opportunity was there to actually see some of these things instead of just talking about it, and that just didn't happen, you know? But when you see the same things over and over, the knockouts, you know, is a mess right now. It is, I, I'm sorry, this is the worst women's division in wrestling right now. Even NWA in a few months has put together a better uh, women's division than what Impact has right now. It's not a knock on the talent itself. It's just the pr presentation of the talent, the way the, the roster's formatted to where, you know, they're, we got these tag team champions and no one to defend against. Uh, got a knockout champion with no one to defend against and you know on BTI they did a match with Kimberly and Deanna uh, I was telling Lunas, Lewis I was like man they actually probably could have created a compelling storyline to make that a anniversary match you know uh, I think we would have still expected Deanna to win but they probably could have done something compelling within that stable whatever you want to call it to make it you know and uh, but just the storytelling within the knockouts is bad uh I mean, that whole story, like, like Deanna's the Knockouts champion, so what What are her lackeys exactly doing wrong that she had to get rid of them? You know what I mean? It's not like she dropped the belt. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So, that just, my thoughts on it, it's not. It's just not a must-see television program right now, and I, you know, I get lots of social media and YouTube hate when I talk about little things like the background music, constant throughout the show, and constant in the interviews, and the, and the overuse of the red which you know if you read the kind of books like I do within marketing they're like do not overuse red because it uh, you know subconsciously tires the viewer fatigues the viewer or your audience it actually pushes people away 
you know, I, I know I sound like a nitpicker a lot of the time, but I do know what I'm talking about with this shit. Even, even though, you know, and I do my best to try to educate people on why I have these opinions rather than sound like a nitpicker, but that's, that is how it comes across. And that's, you know, that's fine. But, uh, the proof is in putting like this stuff does push people away. Um, but I don't think that it, the audience is going away. I just think it's um, more people are DVRing. I think more people are just watching YouTube highlights. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I haven't watched an episode in four weeks. Uh, I, I've watched little bits and pieces. I've watched highlights. But because of my own personal schedule, and that's why I step away from doing the cool factor and everything. Because I just, I just don't have the time. But I still keep an, uh, an ear out and keep an eye out for what's, what's exciting, what's... What are they doing? You know what I mean? And there's just nothing compelling, nothing um, original that they're doing. The Impact Plus shows are the ones that are really, really delivering for the most part for me. It's the weekend television show that isn't. Uh, but I do think they try to tread water. I think their whole idea was to tread water for an entire year until they could sign some new talent at Slammiversary. But the thing is, there's no buzz for Slammiversary. There's not that buzz that there was last year. Or like who's gonna show up like this year the bigger names that you wanted to show up have already showed up elsewhere so there, there's not gonna be Tia Trinidad there's not gonna be Samoa Joe there's most likely not gonna be Mickey James I mean I guess anything's possible I don't think so um, and I, th I think there's one or two other names you know Andrade isn't going to he was in talks with Impact but they he didn't I think uh, he didn't like the dates the number of dates or something like that but they were allowed willing to give him more creative freedom than AEW is, but there was just something with the dates, um, and if you're Impact, don't play hardball with game-changing free agents, you know? That, that's the way I kind of look at shit, so. Um, and then I think with the Kenny Omega stuff, I don't think anyone really expects Sammy Callahan to beat him, and that's why, you know, I talk about the things like one feud at a time, one opponent at a time, so that we can get invested to the point we wonder if that person's going to win or not. But when you're when you're, you know, blowing your load, you know, you got a Moose feud, food feud going on, and then you get Sammy Callahan involved. Like you already, that already tells you Moose isn't going to win, and Sammy's not going to win because he doesn't have any momentum. He has no, there's no reason we we should believe that he's going to win. And he didn't even get this number one contendership by, uh, you know, by getting hot, by going on a roll, by going on a streak. He got it by technicality. You know, he even got into the the number one contendership match by a technicality. So, you know, they they show their hands much too often, and I think they want Eddie Edwards to win the belt. I think they want him to at least wrestle Kenny Omega. Sammy Callahan's not gonna win, and I think they've been trying to paint. Okay, we're we're this whole story is gonna be about Impact's gonna be the underdog, and people are just gonna you know be on the edge of their seat waiting for when Kenny Omega is going to drop the belt. That's not what it is. Now people just w can't wait for this to be over. They just want him to drop the belt because they want it to be done. You know, and that's the exact opposite of, I think, of what they were going for. And then I think a lot of people are even starting to pick up on the fact that he's likely not going to get actually beat when he loses the belt. I think, I think he will. But people are picking up on the fact that that's a strong possibility that he loses it in some kind of multi-man match. Um, but I think Eddie Edwards is going to be the one. And then I, I even would say the most creative way at this point that you could do it is probably have Josh Alexander uh, cash in option C. You, you know what I mean? That's pro probably, I think it's going to be a, t I think there's the possibility, strong possibility, that we get a title versus title match where Kenny is trying to also win the exhibition championship. But Josh Alexander uh, wins the Impact World Championship back. So I don't think it'll be option C necessarily. I don't think this company, this, uh, these guys want to do that. But I, but I, I, I think that's that's my prediction, is that Kenny's also going to want the X Division Championship, but Josh beats him, and you know because they've been talking. Also, I'm going to shut up here in a second, that they want the X Division Championship to, to be on par with the world title. This is the way to do it. Okay, so I'm probably going to double down on that theory later, especially since I know a lot of the uh, viewers here probably uh, signed out a little early uh, <laughs> this video. So we're going to talk about this more later. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out.